Hello everybody, Jody Ann Johnson here with the 80th episode of Coffee with Jody. And in honor of Earth Month, we're going to be talking today about sustainability and actually shopping and sourcing locally. I think everybody would agree that shopping locally and sourcing locally is good for the community because we're reinvesting in our community and we're creating a healthier and healthier uh, economic environment in our community. But I also want to talk about how manufacturing is making a comeback in the United States. And part of the reason why shopping locally and uh, sourcing locally can be good for your business is because with the increase in automation and increases in efficiency, things can be made better and faster here in the States. When they're made overseas, they have to make a very long trip from wherever it is that you're sourcing from, mainly through the ocean, to get here. And as we all know from the recent um, blockage of the Suez Canal, you know, that can have issues in and of itself. <laughs> but the, the important thing is that we are gaining efficiencies which are driving down cost and demonetizing what it actually costs to have anything from a computer to a television and so on. Yes, of course, labor can be sourced uh, much cheaper in other parts of the world. However, it can also have a limit to the amount of talent that's uh, in the area that you're sourcing from, as well as the standards that we in the U.S. are accustomed to. So being competitive isn't just about having lower labor costs. It's also about efficiencies. And this is why the conversation that we've been engaging in now for over a year regarding lean practices, whether you're manufacturing, hospitality industry, the office environment of professional services, whatever it is, that lean is about eliminating waste and continuous improvement, building quality in, and all the way up through respecting people that impacts our efficiencies and makes it much more attractive to source domestically and locally. Obviously, keeping costs down for a small business allows for its own sustainability. And while that's really important, I often have to coach people on looking at the hidden cost, whether it's elevated logistics fees, whether it's errors, whether it's delays that impact their ability to be um, cost effective overall. Many times we're looking at costs inside of silos when we really need to be looking at overall costs and making sure that through that analysis that our costs are kept low because we've been able to be smart about identifying hidden costs, whether it's keeping excess inventory because we're worried about being able to get the supply that we need or it's about having to send something back because it was the wrong product, the wrong size, you know, and so on with errors that get made. When we source locally and domestically, we greatly reduce the environmental impact, um, the carbon footprint that we have. So the idea is, yes, we want to do good for the world and go do good for the economy of our community, but we can also do good for our business. So I want to talk about food because this week in Florida is the Save the Food Florida Week. Uh, they'll be talking about schools and institutions on the 6th. On the 7th, they're talking about food waste in the hospitality industry and then in the community. I was surprised to learn that 40% of food in the home is wasted due to buying something that um, that we bought in bulk or we bought extra of and then maybe we didn't make it that night we went out to dinner or something else and the food ended up going bad and because food gets processed um, the harvest.org says our fruits and vegetables travel in the US about 1500 miles before they reach their final destination. That's crazy. And it means that these large growers are growing, picking, preserving, and packaging for the food to make that journey. And then many times they haven't ripened properly and we end up throwing them out. A lot of wastes happen where you're look, whether you're looking at 
um, overseas labor and reduce costs for products from overseas or if we're looking at food, which is a big theme of this month. Either way, when we begin to invest in a locally sourced foods, locally and domestically sourced products, we gain a stronger economy and we reduce the carbon footprint, which reduces the environmental damage and helps us to restore the earth, which is the theme of this year's Earth Day on April 22nd. The last thing I want to share with you is the, the journey of the coffee bean. <laughs> I was wondering about the journey of the coffee bean because most coffee is grown in other parts of the world. I don't know if you know this, but 62% of Americans have coffee every morning when they wake up. And the coffee bean, whether it's grown in Brazil or in Vietnam or anywhere else, ends up at a 12 cent to 25 cent per pound that ends up going to the actual farmer. From the farmer, it gets taken, packaged, and sent to a mill. At the mill, they dry it and they dehusk it, and then they've got to package it again to send uh, to either a trader or to make this long trip through the ocean to the US. And then from here, they're going to roast it, and then it'll have to be packaged again and then sent uh, to where its final destination is. So it makes quite a long journey from the grower to the coffee uh, that you have either at your local coffee shop or in your home. Now I hate to admit it, but I will let you know that we make a pot of coffee and we don't always drink it all. So I'm looking at, gosh, you know, do we need to make less coffee and then use the Keurig in the office if we want more coffee later in the day? It, I have to admit, we waste coffee. To think that the farmer only gets between 12 and 25 cents per pound is really sad. So we looked at the uh, coffee growing farms here in the U.S. It says there's only three places that they can grow coffee successfully in the U.S. Hawaii, California, and Puerto Rico. So now we're looking at where can we begin to get our coffee so that we reduce that carbon footprint and actually get locally and domestically sourced coffee. All of this is quite a lot to take in. Um, it can be almost overwhelming. However, if you start to investigate and dive into sourcing locally and at least domestically, you may be quite surprised at how beneficial it is to your company, how it could lower your cost by preventing errors, delays, and logistical fees and so on, and make it better for our earth. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to my YouTube channel where we'll be continuing to talk about lean, sustainability, in the office, out in our world, uh, and you know, just generally making the world a better place by being a business for good. That's it, bye for now.